uh, Peter Sutherland, uh, was appointed Special Representative of the Secretary General for International Migration and Development. Already in 2006, under uh, Mr. Kofi Annan, he's serving now under the second second mandate under um, Secretary General Ban Ki Moon. Uh, he has had a most illustrious career. It would take me far too long to go into all of it, but I simply say that he has combined excellence in both public service as well as in his private sector career. He was Attorney General of Ireland. I believe it's safe to say the youngest. Uh, Attorney General in Irish history. He was the EU Commissioner for both Compensation Policy and Education. He was Director General of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, the GATT, and then later uh, Director General of the World Trade Organization. He served as 13 years as the Chairman CEO of uh, British Petroleum until 2010, and is currently Chairman of Goldman Sachs. Uh, besides having held uh, or currently holding many other business and academic positions and serving on countless boards. Um, as the Special Representative of Secretary General, Mr. Sutherland has been the, the inspiration and the driving force uh, behind the creation of the Global Forum for Migration and Development. Um, the GFMD, as it's known, uh, now serves, as you know, as the key global state-led forum for dialogue and for exchange of perspectives and viewpoints and experiences on the critical migration issues of our time. Indeed, it was uh, through SRSG Sutherland's uh, leadership that government, civil society, and intergovernmental partners have all enhanced their understanding and their cooperation on migration matters. In fact, it's been quite remarkable, and it's been noted here already this morning, the, the unusually wide convergence of views uh, coming out of the second high-level dialogue. Um, so working constantly to improve the lives of migrants and the positive outcomes of migration, as you will have seen, in Mr. Sutherland's latest publication in the last 48 hours. It's a pleasure uh, to have SRSG Sutherland here this morning to talk about the significance of the HLD, perhaps some of its outcomes and plan key follow-up initiatives, and the, per, perhaps some, a word on the relevance of IOM to all of this. So uh, you have the floor, sir. First of all, let me say that it is a particular honor to share the podium uh, with De Deputy Secretary General Eliasson and uh, uh, Ambassador Swing, who are two statesmen, international statesmen, uh, that I greatly admire. I say no more than that other than to thank Ambassador Swing for his generous introduction. When I was appointed Special Representative in 2006, as referred to by Ambassador Swing, at that time, Deputy Secretary General Eliasson was the President of the General Assembly. He was an indispensable ally at that time in our efforts to create the Global Forum, which has become, in the intervening period, of vital importance in the development of policy in, rega in relation to uh, international migration. He was then and remains a forceful and consistent and articulate uh, representative and champion for the international migration agenda, for which I'm grateful. The IOM, under Ambassador Swing, is a transformed institution, the core and key institution, in my opinion, in the area of migration policy. Its extraordinary growth reflects how today almost every state in the world must consider and manage migration and the impact of international migration as a priority in policy terms. The growth in IOM, I should say, also reflects profound and justified confidence in Ambassador Swing's leadership. <clears throat> I think that that's an important element in what has happened. In less than a decade, 
Beyond the positive transformation of IOM, we have witnessed critical progress in how the international community addresses migration. The progress is best captured, I think, by the success of the Global Forum. Today, the Forum, under its uh, excellent Swedish leadership, is becoming a year-round resource for governments, as well as an engine for international cooperation, state-led, non-binding, but very important. We've also seen the proliferation and rising relevance of regional consultative processes. The Global Migration Group, meanwhile, has been created to help the UN system to engage on migration in a more systemic, systematic and effective fashion and has helped in doing so. And of course, as is so evident today at the national and local levels, migration remains an inescapable political, economic and social issue. It is also, as we have seen in recent days, a contentious one. There is without doubt a groundswell of demand from states and stakeholders for greater cooperation in order above all to protect the human rights of migrants and also to tap the tremendous economic, social and cultural benefits migration can generate. Yet, while we've made much progress, the challenges we face today are much greater in scale and scope than they were even a decade ago, and they are far outpacing our capacity to address them. This is not just a matter of institutional capacity. It's a function of mindset. The 21st century is one in which human mobility will inexorably and increasingly become the norm. It is an unescapable, inescapable uh, reality. We're not just talking about a static number, about the 232 million people who live outside their country of birth. We're talking about the members of their families, which are a multiple of that 232 million who rely on them. We're talking about hundreds of millions of more, at least, who today live in their country of birth, but who at some point in their lifetimes will move across borders to study or to work. And we're talking about communities in which these migrants live. In other words, we're talking about all of us. And as an Irishman who comes from a country of migration, I'm particularly conscious of this. And we ask ourselves what we must do next. Well, one thing is clear, we have to do it with wind in our sails, not in our faces. Last month's high-level dialogue was, I think, a watershed in the history of cooperation on migration. It wasn't revolutionary, it was evolutionary, but it did provide progress in various ways. It produced an, out an outcome document uh, which, thanks significantly to the skills of Mexico, uh, took responsibility for crafting, who took uh, responsibility for crafting a consensus, reached a consensus. The declaration underscores how much we have in common when it comes to analyzing the challenges and opportunities of migration and sets out a relative relatively clear guidance on the priorities we need to set. Secondly, there was an overwhelming endorsement at the high-level dialogue of our goal to ensure that migration is included in the post-2015 development agenda. This was featured prominently in the declaration, in the Secretary General's opening remarks, and in the statements of 54 countries during the high-level dialogue. My basic premise for why we must pursue this is simple. The spirit of my immigrants is one of the world's greatest natural resources. But it is a resource that we, we often squander through inattention, discrimination and negativism towards migrants. The post-2015 agenda offers us a unique opportunity to design concrete, practical, measurable ways to reduce the human, social and economic costs of migration that goes beyond rhetoric into reality. And I'm delighted that the IOM Council is apparently favorably considering a resolution which you may adopt 
in support of integrating migration into the post-2015 agenda. We need to underscore to the drafters of the post-2015 agenda that migration is the original strategy for people seeking to escape poverty, mitigate risk and build a better life. Migration has contributed already significantly to achieving the Millennium Development Goals by raising incomes, funding investment in human capital, supporting the creation of businesses and jobs, contributing to the transfer of knowledge, skills and ideas, and promoting investments and trade flows between countries of origin and destination. As the global community debates a post-MDG agenda, the case for including migration is stronger and more urgent than it was in 2000. It's a vital part of the future agenda of the world. Your resolution today may be critical in helping us to make that case. A third important outcome of the high-level dialogue was the formulation of an initiative to protect migrants affected by crises an initiative that I first began urging states to pursue two years ago. For those of you who might not have followed this effort until now, the goal is to establish a set of principles and guidelines to protect migrants affected by acute onset crises, like the civil conflicts in Libya and Syria, Hurricane Sandy in the United States, or the tsunami and nuclear meltdown in Japan. To offer one example of a principle in action, during Hurricane Sandy and its aftermath, the U.S. suspended immigration enforcement actions and offered government aid to all affected individuals, including immigrants, regardless of their legal status. <clears throat> the initiative will define the roles and responsibilities of countries of origin and destination, neighboring states, employers, international organizations and civil society. It complements the vital work done by IOM with its migration crisis operational framework. I leave that there, since this effort is now in the hands, in particular, of the United States and Philippines, who generally, generously offered to organize the initiative. They've already met and spoken several times in recent weeks, and I'm sure you'll be hearing from them soon. Fourth, the high-level dialogue made clear that there are a great many challenges and opportunities related to migration that we are ill-prepared to address. Thus, we need to think creatively about how to foster more effective, results-oriented cooperation among states and stakeholders. We have several milestones ahead. The GFMD in Stockholm next May, the GFMD in Turkey in 2015, and throughout that, the marathon of post-2015 deliberations. I intend to focus on four fronts in the, co in the coming year on behalf of the Secretary-General uh, and beyond. These will include building on the conclusions and guidance we received at the high-level dialogue. Acting on the Secretary-General's request uh, in his address to the high-level dialogue, that I meet regularly with the leadership of the GMG and GFMD, I will do so, so that we can do everything possible to coordinate our work. We will focus on ensuring, too, that migration is given the consideration, as I've said, in the post-2015 development. There is an informal working group acting on this. The group includes several member states, Sweden, Mexico, Bangladesh, France and Switzerland, as well as the most relevant UN agencies. IOM, of course, has played an indispensable role as a leading member of the group. We'd be happy to have other states join our group as well. The only prerequisite is a willingness to work hard on achieving a goal. The informal group is in the midst of drafting what we will call a reference document, summarizing why migration should be in the post-2015 agenda. Equally, our group has focused on advocacy. We need your help on this front to identify the actors. Thirdly, we will remain involved in the crisis migrants initiative. Fourthly, and perhaps most importantly, 
I've promised the Secretary General that I will systematically assess the challenges and opportunities we face with respect to international migration and develop recommendations on how to improve cooperation. In this regard, let me finally say, and perhaps most importantly of all, make the point that in considering the future of international migration, IOM's role can and should only grow. How it will grow, of course, is for you. It is in your hands to determine. But I have become utterly convinced that it is a central player, a central player in the development of this absolutely vital policy area. It is without question the IOM's reach in the world of migration that is unique. Its experience on the ground is unparalleled and its institutional memory runs deep. I greatly look forward, therefore, to working closely with Ambassador Swing, with his staff and with the IOM Council to determine how we can take all the lofty words forward, the lofty words that we speak in for forums such as this, and through vision and grit, transform these lofty words into practical results, real, tangible improvements in how migrants live their lives and how our communities, both of destination and origin, thrive as a result. We have to learn how to effectively resist the more negative voices, increasingly evident in some of the developed world, who oppose migration on false ideas which may be populist and popular as a result, but which do not reflect the reality of the contributions that migrants make in particular to the countries of destination. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. If I were down home in my native south, I would say to both of these presentations, amen. <laughs> But well, since I'm not there, I just said it, you didn't hear it. Uh, more popular, you would probably say, wow. But um, I'm, very, I'm very, very grateful to both of you. This is a very, very rich uh, uh, presentation. So I, I want to open the floor for comments.